Okay, so basic serial is really just three conductors. Three pins is all you really need for a simple serial interface. In fact, you can actually get away with two if you don't need to uh, have data going both directions. But of the three, you've got transmit, receive, and signal ground. And the signal ground isn't like ground um, on your power ground. I mean, it can be, but it, it should be kind of isolated so it doesn't carry any amperage. Um, the ground is really just used as a reference point to measure the voltage between the um, receive and the ground or to, to figure out what voltage to transmit so that there's a voltage between transmit and ground equivalent to whatever the, the system is that you're transmitting. So like RS-232, um, your plus or minus 12 volts on either the signal pins is relative to the signal ground, not the power ground that comes into the power supply on the circuit. For most devices though, you obviously have to have the transmit from one device going to the receive of another. So whatever your other device is, you've got your RX, TX and signal ground. I'll just call it SG in this case. So signal ground just goes to signal ground, transmit goes to the receive, and transmit on this side goes to the receive on that side. Um, really it's just that simple. Uh, these nine pin serial ports have, well obviously there's some extra pins there. Those are from the carryover days of modems where they had uh, uh, some other signaling info in there about whether they're ready to send data or not and some other stuff. And believe it or not, they even could fill up these 25 pins with other bits of information for other things. But we don't really use any of that stuff anymore. Uh, it's just data is all that we use. Any signaling info is usually in the data stream itself, not in the extra pins. In the case of a GPS receiver, if, like, say, this side is your GPS receiver, um, it doesn't really need to receive anything. So you can just ignore the receive part on this. The, the Whatever the data is sending to, it only goes from the transmit to that receive on your computer, yield monitor, whatever. Um, unless you're like sending RTK d correction data back or something, generally this uh, transmit to receive, the receive side on the GPS receiver isn't going to do anything at all. Um, a lot of them do configuration through that, in which case anytime you send configuration commands it has to be sent to the receiver via that. But uh, if you're just hooking up a yield monitor temporarily or something, you can actually cheat and get away without doing that in a lot of cases. Totally depends on the application though, so if you're using something that has two-way communication like Trimble's TSIP where it'll automatically reconfigure the receiver to do what it needs to do, then, well, you'll need both systems, or both transmit and receive on, on that. The other big point on serial is the uh, port speed, which is usually pretty confusing to people. Um, I'm sure you've seen things like that 38,400 bits per second, and people are generally just don't have a clue what that means because the numbers just don't seem to really be any reference to anything. Well, back in the day long ago when the serial thing kind of got started, they had 300 baud modems, which were painfully slow, but uh, were really pretty awesome at the time, I guess. I wasn't around for that. Uh, and then they, you know, figured out how to make technology better. They had 600 baud modems, doubled it again to 1,200 baud modems, doubled it again to 2,400 baud. That was like uh, Secret Service ran that way back and Reagan was the president, was the president of the U.S. So this has like been quite some time. Um, doubled again, 4800, which is actually the uh, NEMA GPS standard for uh, one hertz GPS receivers is 4800 baud. Uh, a lot of really basic devices use that too, but you really can't get a whole lot of data down a cable in, in 4800 baud. If you double it again, you get 9600. 9, if I could write that, double that again, you get 192. If you double that again, you get 384. Um, somewhere in here they also went to like the 14.4, which was actually three times 4,800. Um, 14.4, and then they doubled that and went to 28, 8, 28,800. I'll move the paper up so you can see it here. Um, if they double 28.8, you'll get uh, 57,600, um, which is kind of in the realm of that whole 56k modem thing, although that's not exactly linked to this, but that's another common baud rate. And then the main speed that uh, a lot of devices use today is 115200, which is uh, double this number, or if you were to add these two together and double it, you'd get that. Or you know, I mean, it, it's all there's a relation to this. There's a pattern to it. It's all doubles and, and triples, where they just keep increasing port speed. Generally speaking, this uh, 115,200 bits per second is kind of the maximum speed in serial for a lot of serial devices. It is possible to go faster than that, even up to one meg, 
but usually if you need something faster than 115k a second you need to be using something other than serial so that's why that's what it is also um, i'm sure you've seen speeds advertised as like 9600 8 n 1 and this is uh some the 8 n 1 part is like how many data bits how many parity bits and how many stop bits which this is used for um, data integrity transmitting it down the wire and both systems the, the transmit and receive have to match the same speed and, and other baud rate settings if those are a mismatch uh, sometimes you'll you'll see data but it's just the receiving end just kind of trying to make out what it thinks might be there and it isn't necessarily proper data it'll look garbled or whatever 